Hi guys, Dave Waring here again with digitalbrainbase.com. And today I'm pleased to announce our beta release of the Open Web UI installer for Windows. We've developed this installer to align with our mission of making it as easy as possible to set up, own, and control your own digital brain. And we're looking for early adopters to help us test out the installer on their Windows machines and provide feedback. And we'll also be providing full support for any questions or issues that you have during the install process. I've included a link to uh, the full description of the installer, as well as where you can download it and access the GitHub repository in the description section of this video. And for the rest of this video, I'm gonna turn it over to Dave Jones, the developer who developed the Open Web UI installer to walk you through the process. Take it away, Dave. Hello, this will be a quick tutorial on using the Open Web UI installer by Brain. You'd have downloaded it by now. Here's the executable I have here. And just simply click and you'll start to run it. The first thing it does, it checks to see if you have Docker installed or any of the containers. Currently, I do not have Docker or any of the containers, so I have an install button. I click it, and it will immediately start to download Docker. And when it is finished, it will then start to run the install process. This should take but a few minutes to download, um, and then the install process takes a few more minutes. As you can see, it's started now. It will ask to elevate permissions, of course, and then it will run the same setup process as if you had downloaded it yourself. Now this install process does take a few minutes, as I said before, and this needs to happen if you are using Windows, uh, simply because it's the best way to install Open Web. When it's finished, uh, we will have to do a little reboot, um, it, which is advised if you are on a brand new PC, in addition to when that reboot happens, it will ask you to set up WSL, the, a console will come up. It will walk you through the process. Uh, it's very simple. I believe just two, cl two clicks of your keyboard and two minutes. If you've ever installed Docker by yourself, uh, you will know that this is the same exact process. We haven't done anything different. We just simply made it easy to go out, download it, and start, the, start it for you. There we go. The install process is now over. And as you can tell, we go ahead and keep everything uh, disabled, though. It'll tell you that you need to reboot. And so we will take care of that right now. Now, on my PC, I do not need to reboot it right at this second. So I will just simply start up as if you would. It checks the install to make sure it likes what it sees. And then the setup containers lit. At this time, though, do not click anything on here. You need to open Docker up for the first time. As there is a sign-up process that you need to do. Even if it's for personal use, um, it is simple, it's quick, painless. As you can see, yeah. it's personal. And this sign up process allows you to download the images from Docker that'll be necessary to run everything. Now, because I have an account already there, it is just going to blink. I skip this, and now I have Docker installed. So I'll come back to the installer. As you can tell, if you do not pick a flavor, it will warn you. I'm going to go with the, this is the default. It assumes that you're going to be using Olama on your local PC. Um, whichever way you want to go about to do that, of course, you can use a Docker image. You can run it uh, from Olama and they're straight from their EXE, uh, which my personal taste I advise because it, it runs smoother that way. It, it's in its native environment as they want it to be. So now we've selected it. Let's go ahead. When it starts, it will tell you the containers that it's working on. The first thing it has to do is download the images from Docker. This will take a few minutes. It's probably about a gig or two. Um, so based on your connection to the internet, yeah, could take a little longer, could take a little less. There are three containers total that it's going to run through this process. Um, the first one, of course, is the one that takes the longest. As the containers do get loaded, you will notice that they will populate here. And from here, you'll be able to see what's running, what's not running. And when we get all three loaded, I will go through and tell you what they do. There we go. We have the first container, which is Open Web UI itself. Um, it immediately goes to the pipeline container, again, downloading the image. And once that's done, it will set it up and start it for us. There we go. Now we have pipelines. The next container is Watchtower. 
Watchtower has been set up to monitor both of these images. And so if there are any updates, it takes care of that for you. Um, if it's ever shut down for any reason whatsoever, just start it up and it will take care of the updating for you. This way you don't have to watch for anything and it just makes it simple and easy. And it's also the recommended way that OpenWebUI suggests. Now, as you can see, we do have, I can close this out. We do have everything installed. If something went wrong, we do have log files here that you can take a look at. Uh, you can send them to get support from us. We have all three containers running. Simply go here if you wish to. Click, click, click it, and then you can see Open Web UI is now installed. Quick and painless. If you have any questions, you can come to the forums, ask questions, and we will try to answer them the best we can. Thank you, and have a nice day.